I'm Chef Sandy from Bronyville Podcast and Chair of Nightmare Nest Dallas, and you're listening to The MBS Show. Hello and welcome to The MBS Show, episode 93. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James Cork. Hello there, Norman. How are you today? Hey there, James. How are you doing, man? Uh, I'm here working, doing a picture for my live stream. Oh. And doing good. And if I'm not mistaken, we are live now in the stream, right? We are live. We have a hefty number of people here, 43 viewers watching us uh, doing this podcast live. Yeah. Yay, live show. It has been my dream to do so. Live show with live derps. Yes, live derps. Uh, only editing will know. But anyway, um, hello there, stream. Uh, I hope you... Uh, interested in asking questions because I know I am. <laughs> uh, that was just bad. Anyway, our guest for this week is the very talented and wonderful Chef Sandy from Bronyville. Well, thank you very much. Hey, hey there, Sandy. How are you doing? Pretty good. Sorry for inviting you too early in the morning because I know I would have just gone to bed. <laughs> well, you know, it's I always like showing up and helping on these shows and 7 a.m. is not that early for me. Uh, that's good to know. Hopefully our questions will not be too boring for you. Uh, well, we'll try to keep it uh, interesting for everyone listening. And for you, of course. Indeed. But anyway, Chef, before we start the show, we need to ask you, well, you have been a guest before, so it's going to be the two important questions. And question number one is, who is your favorite character? That would be uh, Rarity. Mm. Yes. Man <laughs> after my own heart. <laughs> this is a change because a few... Well, a few episodes ago, you said it was Rainbow Dash. What made the change? Uh, it was actually the Rarity Micro comic. Mm. Um, it was sort of the, during the long, ponyless summer when we didn't have any fresh content. And basically, I went back, rewatched some stuff, and then the Rarity Micro came through. And I consider them as much canon as pretty much anything else. Because, I mean, they're official. And I'm like, I really enjoyed Rarity's character, and I kind of like started liking her more. Uh, the writer, uh, Rainbow Dash is still up there. She's still number two, you know. Everyone's like, oh my goodness, it's such a change. And I'm like, she's, she's still up there. Rainbow Dash is still a good. You know? okay. Can it can it also be because Rainbow Dash hasn't had a good episode since Sonic Rainboom? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, actually. I mean, honestly, Mary Weather Williams do cover both, uh, like, Merduwell Mer 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 and Wonderbolts Academy. And it's like, what are you guys doing with Rainbow Dash? <laughs> yeah, Rainbow Rainbow needs a good episode or two this season. I agree. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. Maybe maybe on this new episode today, she'll um, show her best side, maybe. Who knows? Th then you can go back to Apple's Hider teasing you about Rainbow Dash being worse pony. But anyway, second question is, what's your favorite episode? I still think that uh, Sonic Rainboom is a really good episode. Um, I really like Sister Who's Social. Um, it's really hard to nail down a favorite. Heck, I even like Magical Mystery Cure, and that's a really divisive episode. I love that episode as well. I like all the songs. Yep. So. The songs are good. Yeah, I think I'm going to probably go with Sonic Rainboom is still like my number one. Mm, okay. But the other ones are up there. Yeah, Sonic Rainbow is a good one. Sonic Rainbow is a good one. Yeah, it's usually the episode that uh, it tends to turn people into fans of the show because of how well paced it is and all the action, all the character moments, like Rarity being Bane and, and, and self centered and Rainbow that's freaking out. It's a good episode. Definitely one of the best. Mm -hmm. Thanks for answering the important question, Sandy. And moving on to the next topic is housekeeping. And into this housekeeping, have you ever wanted to meet the? Sorry, I, I want to do this. I want to do this. Do this special. <clears throat> have you ever wanted to meet and hang out with the MBS show crew? Maybe chat it up with them. If the answer is yes, do we have exciting news for you on December twenty first? Get your chance to meet up with Norman Sanzo, Daniel Anthony, and Tasharina at Comic Fiesta, Malaysia's longest running ACG convention to be held at Kuala Lumpur Convention Center from the 21st to the 22nd of December. Come and meet us and say hello, and maybe share your head cannon with us. <clears throat> wow, I did not expect that to go so well. Yeah, so, we, well, I will be at Comic Fiesta, and so will Dan. 
and come and meet us and say hi, because I don't bite. I'm not sure about Dan, but I don't. James, I wish you could be there. Um, I actually personally, I love to be there as well. But every time I go to a convention, I end up being like a hundred euros more poor, and I don't want to do that. Well, James, uh, uh, I need to save up. I need to save up. Yeah, but James, the conversion from the euro is about point four or point five. So you be only, rich. That only makes things worse. I will spend so much money that I will not be able to catch up. <laughs> then I'll say, "Oh my God, I'm two hundred euros poorer." <laughs> no. <sighs> But you'll be, what, 0.4, meaning, uh, I don't account, my head's already hurting. But yeah, do do come and meet us and say hi. We don't bite. And moving on to the next topic is news time. And in today's news time, Comics Alliance vote MLP Comic best in your face to opponents of all ages. Is that opponents? I, to be honest with you, I have no idea how uh, how this award will work. It's really weirdly worded. Yeah, but anyway, recently the website Comic Alliance did their best comic book of 2013, and the My Little Pony comic was awarded the best in your face to opponents of all ages comic. In their article, they said that the core My Little Pony Friendship is Magic series is endlessly delightful. Every creator who touched the book does so with the with a clear understanding of the style and spirit of the popular, uh, popular, eh, popular and acclaimed animated series. The story managed to hold up well enough for adults, but more importantly, are also accessible and fun for kids. Basically, My Little Pony: Friendship is Magic is what DC New Fifty Two should have been. Links can be found in the show notes. And, wow. yeah, New 52. <laughs> so, wow, if they can bash DC for that, mm, it, meaning, it does mean well, that... Just, well, you see, the way they worded it is like, oh, this is better than this, and then they are comparing. And I, well, I hate making comparisons between one thing and the other because it's unfair for both parts. You have to judge something on its own merits. What they're saying is... Uh, from what I understand, the new 52 is a clean slate. It's for newcomers to go in and read it without knowing any backlog or back history of certain characters. But the new 52 didn't do that well. There's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of what is this, what is that. And yeah, if you're comparing about new comics, My Little Pony did better. Hmm. Yeah, and unfortunately, a lot of the uh, new 52 comics got cancelled fairly early on in their run. So it's like they wiped the slate clean, gave these characters new backgrounds, new stories, and then a good chunk of them didn't make it past the first six months. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because people are just like, yeah, I really don't care all that much about, you know, the new origin of Batwoman. (laughs) Whatever. Uh, Yeah. You can only, you can only reboot something a a number of times before people get tired of it. No, no, no. I think you can do a reboot multiple times, but you need to do it well. Because yeah, but if you don't tell a good story with the IP you have, it's basically, nah, it's not going to work out well. Yeah, but then again, you have there, there you have Superman Returns, and it bombed in the box office. So they went and made Man of Steel, which did, which did okay. And then you have Sam Raimi uh, rebooting Spider-Man, because I don't know if you remember, but there was a version of Spider-Man do- done in the 70s or 80s that looked horrible. So they brought Sam Raimi to do the three Spider-Man movies, but then they go and reboot the story again with Danny, Andrew Garfield. And he's like, can we, can we get... I, I'm talking from the movie's perspective, of course, but can we just get one... Uh, storyline and then one origin story and not having to go back to okay let's reboot the characters let's tell it differently like it's all right you want to get new audience that is true but the old the the old school guys are getting kind of tired well it's not really for us the reboot is mostly for the new generation and i think we are going off topic here yeah um my little pony (laughs) getting the award for best in your face opponent of Legion's comic, yeah, that's good on them, man. And, and I'm not sure how valid um, uh, Comic Alliance is. Well, Comics Alliance is a kind of a just a casual, not not very in depth uh, comic site. It's run by AOL. It's not like you know super geeks or whatever. Um, 
I, I think the way that they phrase it, though, is like, hey, you know, this shows that all ages comics can be good. Mm-hmm. Uh, because people more often than not, they'll, which is weird, they'll dismiss things like, uh, you know, Adventure Time and Regular Show and uh, the, the quote unquote kids comics. Mm-hmm. And, you know, of course, there's a Sonic and the Mega Man. And people are like, oh, they're not serious comics. Those are for kids, which, oh, my. well, they are. Comics are generally for children. Um, so, but basically they're saying that, you know, My Little Pony is a fantastic example of an all-ages comic that can appeal to pretty much everybody. Which is true, because, I mean, it's made IDW a ton of money. But, hey, a word is still an award. And talking about awards and other stuff, let's move on to the next news topic. Twilight and Trixie vinyl figure coming next year. As some of you may know, most of the crew enjoyed their pony vinyl figure from Funko, available at Hot Topic and other leading outlets. Sell out. A web store called Pop Culture recently added two new items to their system. The items are a Trixie and Twilight vinyl figure from Funko. The estimated time of the vinyls to be sold is in February 2014 and its price is at $19.66 for Trixie and $21.99 for Twilight. Links can be found in the show notes. So I know I buy all of the vinyl figures. What about you guys? Do you buy the vinyl figures? I have all of them myself. Yay! You know, I sadly I I didn't manage to get any of them uh, because none of the websites that sell them ship them to Spain. Wow! Now that is a problem. You see, there's people saying, "Oh, it's difficult to be a fan of the show in other countries." In Spain, it's almost impossible because when you get something shipped, you get shipped shipped it with uh, incredible charges. <laughs> Or uh, you don't get it shipped at all. It's like, no, we don't ship to Spain. No, we don't ship to Europe. <laughs> no, we don't ship to those countries. Well, tell me about it. Mm. But anyway, if we look at the price here, Trixie is at, is at almost 20 bucks and Twilight is at 21 bucks. So is this going to be an Elecon Twilight? Um, hmm, I don't know. But those prices, they, well, it could be that they're just first first to post the pre-orders because they want to... They wanna, Jack up the price a little bit mm. um, because they only sell for like thirteen, fourteen dollars in the store. Mm. Um, alternatively, it could be that they're like deluxe, like you said, Alicorn Twilight and Trixie with a cape and a hat. Mm, okay, well, it does make sense because everybody knows Trixie for her cape and hat, and Twilight. Well, Twilight is going to be a bit confusing. Which version of Twilight is it? Season four Twilight, or is it? Anything under season three? Well, considering that this is coming out now, uh, probably it was in production for longer than that. It's possible that it might be Twilight Corn. Hmm. Well, could be, could be. But I can't wait uh, because I have them all. And looking at the Spitfire version that is only available in Toys R Us, it's really awesome. She got the goggles and everything. And that's, that's cool. And Funko has been really selling a lot of pony merch. So anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is guest time. And in today's guest time, we have Chef Sandy from Brodyville and also the chair for Nightmare Night Dallas. Hey, Sandy, how are you doing? Pretty good. Sorry for dropping a lot. <laughs> Sorry for dropping a lot. It's all good. So, having fun? Yeah. Um, I'm feeling a little bit more awake now. I've had some uh, some tea. Yay, I have tea too. <laughs> oh, good. I, I think we have a Brit in the chat or in the, well, yeah, in the chat. Uh, I'm not sure where he is. But um, for people who might not know who you are, mind telling them? Okay. Uh, I am Chef Sandy of Burnieville Podcast. I was one of, if not the original Brony podcasters. Ooh. <laughs> back back in the, 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 the dark ages of three years ago. Um <laughs> <laughs> Basically, AC and I were bugging the heck out of our friends talking about ponies, and we figured, hey, let's do a podcast. We'll do a sh- an episode and get it out of our system. And we're now well over 100 episodes. That didn't yeah. work. Mm. 100 episodes later, you still have so much pony in your system, you cannot get rid of it so easily. <laughs> yep. I also am chairman of Nightmare Nights Dallas, uh, one of two. Uh, my co chair, Mr. Carr, is uh, probably rightfully asleep at this time in the morning. 
<laughs> or or being dragged around the house by his two year old. Um, <laughs> one of the two. And we recently ran that at the first week of November, November eighth or tenth. Uh very successful. We raised uh twelve thousand dollars for charity. Uh, which would be 9000 for St. Jude's, which is a children's p- uh, pediatric cancer hospital, uh, and 3000 for the North Texas Food Bank. Wow, that's awesome. When making a convention, of course, you have to uh, take into account a lot of aspects and a lot of factors. Which one would you say is the the cornerstone of uh, the convention building? Which one you'll say, if we don't have this one clear from the get-go, everything falls apart? Having people with experience on your team is absolutely vital. Uh, somebody with an uh, with an understanding of your country's tax laws mm. in regards to um, how conventions are organized. You know, here in the U.S., it's uh, there's multiple different ways you can run it. You can run it as a LLC, which is a limited liability con- uh, company. Um, it's a lot less expensive to start, but you have to pay taxes on everything. Um, there's the Nonprofit social group, which is 501c7, which means you don't pay a lot of taxes, but you have to be more careful with what you spend your money on. Mm -hmm. And then there's the C3, which is just straight nonprofit, where you basically do educational stuff and a lot, and all, and pretty much all your money goes to charity. Um, you know, it's really important that you know what type of convention you're trying to run. So, like for us, Nightmare Nights was run under a 501c7 a nonprofit social club. Mm-hmm. So we didn't have to pay taxes on a lot of things, but our country's uh, tax rules basically meant that uh, we had to spend our money a certain way, report things a certain way, and nobody gets paid. <laughs> okay. It was all volunteer. So when you say nobody gets paid, um, that's for the crew, right? Correct. And what about the guests? Like, um, I'm not saying any of the big guys, but... You know, like maybe, for example, like you invite me and I ask this much, will I still get paid? Well, yes. Um, part of a convention's budget. Now, when I say somebody gets paid, I mean like the staff and the people that are running it don't get paid. Mm. And in a lot of cases, and in my case, we put a lot of our personal money because essentially conventions are a very expensive hobby, especially when you're starting out. Um, you know, definitely the guests that we brought in, you know, the people... You know, they, they received some compensation. What is the thing that you have to avoid the most, uh, uh, like when when you're making a convention? Like, uh, I, I guess over budgeting it, of course. But which one would you say is like the most dangerous thing that you have to avoid at all cost? Well, one thing you need to be absolutely sure of is looking at the trying to get a gauge on the number of bronies in your region. In in Spain, you've got at most of the EU. You're a bit on the west side of Europe, southwest mm-hmm. side, you know. But people would probably travel from the UK, Scotland, Ireland, France, some from Germany, some from Italy. You know, you'd have, you'd have that side, basically Western Europe, could potentially come to your convention. So you kind of think, okay, well, how many bronies are there? And kind of base your projections on that. Say, all right, well... I don't live in this massive area, massively populated running area, so I'm going to aim a little bit low. Because under budgeting, uh, you know, having cost overruns will just end you in the end if you're not careful. Because, you know, you, you plan for a thousand people and 600 people show up. Mm. Your wallet's in serious trouble, right? Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, on our end, we projected. For we projected and budgeted based upon a thousand people, oh, okay. and we had eleven hundred show up on our end. Well, it's not mm-hmm. that bad. Um, so we 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 budgeted very conservatively, and basically did okay. Did did, did great uh, because we were like very conservative with uh, our planning. Also, another major thing um, is guests. You yes. have to be really careful not to overreach on your guests because uh, each person has a draw, right? The number uh-huh. of people that they will bring 
to the convention because they're a great draw. Like Andrea Libman, mm. great draw. Yeah. Peter New, big draw. Brenda Critchell, amazing draw. She is really cool, wonderful lady. Um, and they'll have associated costs. They have appearance fees. They have, you have to pay for their flights. You have to pay for their rooms. They have a per DM, a day, you know, their daily cash allowance, which you have to pay in front. Mm-hmm. And so you have to consider, will this person bring in more money than it's costing me to bring them here? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's what gets a lot of, that's what's gotten a lot of the cons in the U S is people, thinking that adding more guests is a linear curve where it's like, well, this person will probably bring in a thousand people. Well, this person will probably bring a couple hundred, mm-hmm. which means 1200. And that's not how it works. Not every person is going to add the same amount of people. And it's not just directly additive. Hmm. So you need to be smart with who you call. And it's, it's a big balance then of, who do I call to get more people in, and is this person worth it or not? I was yes. actually about. I was actually about to ask, what was your criteria to uh, to select uh, the different guests that uh, that you had? Uh, but I guess that pretty much answers my, my question. I'm going to bring this up just as a, to put it on context. Um, after what happened in Vegas <laughs> uh, early, early on this year, um, uh, there was a. a Big, a bit of reticence from some of the bigger names in the in, in in the show to show up at first year conventions. However, you guys did really good for a for a first year convention, especially after what happened. Um, did you find any re- any resistance from uh, either Hasbro or any of, of the agents uh, for your convention, or uh, was it somewhat of a smooth ride? Well, for us, it was actually a very smooth ride, but there's this very specific reason. Uh, both I and my co-chair, Mr. Carr, we've been running conventions in various forms for many years. I, in a directly like executive capacity for the past six, and Bob <laughs> for many, many more. You know, I first started volunteering at Anime Cons in like 2002, but I have been deeply involved in the core running of other conventions since 2008. Um, and Bob has been running, uh, is slash was executive staff at ACON, which is one of the, well, the South, the South United States largest anime convention is like 25,000 people. So mm-hmm. because we are experienced individuals and well, Bob is versed in contract law it was actually very easy for us because we have the qualifications that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. If you're a 19 year old with a dream and no experience, you're going to have a rough time. (laughs) But you know, both Bob and I were 30 Bob's older than that. And, you know, established individuals, um, with, with the guests that are like, Ooh, first year cons. I mean, that's, that is one of the natural reactions to what happened in Vegas, mm. uh, that people were not really willing to come to all these conventions. And, you know, that's fine because we had our, we, when we made our list of guests, we had backups. You know, it mm. wasn't like, uh, you know, it's like, oh no, this person said no, everything is ruined. <laughs> no. Yeah, we, you had different options to select from. Yeah, and so in the end, we had three voice actors number of show staff and two of the writers. And you also had community guests. And from what I understand, you had Mando Pony and well, Mando Pony coming mm-hmm. to your con is well, a big thing. Well, you know, it certainly didn't hurt that we had uh, Sibzy along <laughs> for the ride. And we're like, yo, if you want to come and perform great. And we told him, Hey, if you just want to come and enjoy the con, that's great too. You're certainly welcome to come. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, there's one of those things where he's like, Oh, well, you're not going to make me perform or really. Like, no, <laughs> um, no nobody's forcing you. And um, so he eventually was very happy to come and spent time with Sibzy as you would expect and, uh, put on a great show on Friday night. People really enjoyed it. Here's the question I have. Um, you said nobody forced him. So did he perform willingly? Oh yeah. And um, was that planned? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, Basically, when we first um, approached Simsy, we were like, yo, hey, 
um, you're, you're, you know, we'd like you to come, you know, here's, here's the deal that we got for you. Um, you know, and Hey, if Mando wants to come, he's certainly welcome. And, you know, we'll make absolutely sure that there's no issues with him, uh, issues toward him from anybody outside, you know, anybody giving him trouble Hmm. and, that was appreciated and you know there absolutely were not any issues and everybody had a good time it's also a very good thing that you guys managed to live stream it uh thanks to was ponyville live the the guys who covered it right uh we didn't stream it but we did video oh. record it streaming is one of those sticky wickets with a lot of people um mm-hmm. basically our particular uh our point of view was that we need to provide value to our attendees first mm-hmm. and not, and so like, Hey, if you want to see it live, you need to show up to the convention, but we will make every effort to record all of our panels and make them available after the fact. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a compromise because, you know, most, most big conventions don't, re- don't, don't stream or they have a paid stream. And also they don't record all of their panels. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, San Diego Comic Con has a paid stream, but it's not everything, and not all of their panels get recorded. You know, some yeah, of them are, are very niche, and uh, so yeah, you end up with, well, that was a great panel, and it's a shame that I'm not going to be able to hear it again. <laughs> yeah, um, speaking, it's, it's, speaking of niche panels, there was that uh, that panel at Equestria LA 2013 where uh, they, they didn't they were not allowed to record it because they were doing a live read of Star Wars. And <laughs> if they had recorded it, uh, they would have got into trouble due to copyright infringement from the Century Fox. That's why they asked people not to record it. Uh-huh. So yep. sometimes there is a good reason not to record a panel or even live stream it. And if you cannot go, well, not everybody can go to these events. It it does get exclusive because it, it justifies the price of the ticket and those people that have to get into the airplane and have to go into the hotels and have to go through hell and back just because they want to see their favorite celebrities. So, yeah, I mean... One thing is being in the convention. Another thing is being sitting on your uh, in front of your computer, being cozy and nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and so you know we, we did compromise. Obviously, you know we we wanted a video record of our event, and Ponyville Live did a fantastic job of it. So we're very yeah, happy I, with what they've done for us, and they're all available on their YouTube. Uh, I absolutely agree. Point. I follow I, I follow uh, uh, Ponyville Live on YouTube. They I agree with you. They did a great job with it, and the b- good video quality, uh, good shots. There is no shaky cam or anything. It's a very very good job. They did a good job with it. That's awesome. So uh, I have I have another question. This one is I I want to think it's slightly funny, but I don't know where it came from. Um, so where did the whole uh, let's drop spaghetti uh, food fund uh, for your for your convention came from? Uh, so there was an incident this year at BronyCon. Um, uh-huh. Individuals from 4chan decided it would be very funny. Uh, the whole spaghetti thing um, is was born out of. Catherine Hobbs? No. Uh, no, there was... Uh, I, I know where it came from. There was yeah, another this... post on 4chan about a guy who goes to a gymnasium and he's trying to pay, but instead of money, he pulls out a bunch of spaghetti out of his pocket. <laughs> and drops so, it, and it's very embarrassing. Yeah. yeah. So spaghetti became a shorthand term for... Drama. Uh, not, um, not drama, but awkwardness. Oh, yes. And so at, at, the con, at BronyCon this summer... People were basically running around dropping cooked spaghetti from their pockets <laughs> and going and, and making awkward photo bombs. So that was um, a waste of food. That's it, it, it was. It was very silly. Um, but some people got very offended by it. Um, so in a way, we wanted to. We wanted to avoid incident, similar incidents at uh, Nightmare Nights, so we basically, instead of treating the people from 4chan like criminals or anything like that, we we're like, hey, let's involve you a little bit. Let's say, <laughs> hey, you know, if you guys want to do something with spaghetti, let's make, let's give you an opportunity to do that. So we, I worked with a couple of people from the site and set up the 
Capra General Memorial Pasta Fund, <laughs> which uh, the joke being that there, there's a video of them, of one of the people basically getting punched uh, <laughs> over it. And then the joke was that the person who, who got punched died. Um, so thus memorial. And so we set it up and people were really confused and were like, is this legit? Are you just making fun of me? You're a convention. Aren't you supposed to be oh, super serious? Oh. And we're like, <laughs> no, we're, we're mitigating. We are doing our due diligence by mitigating any sort of shenanigans uh, by saying, you know, let's involve these people so that they have a way to spend their energy may, and may I do, in, do some good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, may I say how amazing this community can be that we are able to take something that was prone to drama, awkwardness, and terrible and turn it into a charity fund that ended up raising how much money in the end worth of uh, food? Three thousand one hundred and twenty dollars. Wow! Wow! And if and, I'm not mistaken, um, who was it? Uh, big guy have a manly mustache. Dusty Cat. If I'm not Dusty. mistaken, Dusty Cat um, donated a lot of spaghettis. Isn't that true? Uh, Dusty did support, did donate money. Yes, he did. Um, basically, once they figured out that oh, this is a legit thing, he he really turned it around because he was he was initially kind of confused and like, what is this? Is this making fun of me? But I'm like, no, 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 no. This is a legitimate thing. Um, and at the con, you know, he showed up and he had a good time and, you know, everybody played ball, which is very important, you know, because like that was one thing we made people work together. We made people get along and it worked out very well because there was no drama. There was no fighting. People came up. They had a good time. And the only spaghetti that was dropped was large quantities of it into the donation box. Yay. That's what yeah, you want. Okay. It's like this, you know, sometimes people go and complain about this fandom, but it, but it's things like this that make me really appreciate what we do and what we're here for. It's like we can we, we can get something good out of something that was potentially terrible. That's that's unbelievable. You guys did a good job. Um, uh, you. Whoever inspired the idea, you guys who inspired the idea of turning the spaghetti thing into a, into a charity fund, uh, bravo. Good job. You know, it's it's taking what's there and doing something good with it. You need creative yeah. people as well. You need creative people. If you don't have creative people, you wouldn't have been able to come up with that ingenious idea. But it, and you know, they they, and we were. And one thing that we also were very thankful, and we were like, hey, thank you very much to the people that donated. We made sure to acknowledge them and say, you know, y'all are part of the fandom too. You know, it takes it takes all kinds, and <laughs> and so you know everybody was happy, and in the end, it was a drama free experience that raised a bunch of money for sick kids and the hungry and homeless, and you can't really say anything bad about that, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that is also almost unheard of. There is there is not one convention that passes without having some sort of drama outburst or something like that. But being able to go through an entire con. And uh, I'm pretty sure a, a few things might have happened, but nothing major. I mean, completely drama-free and clean. That's that's almost a miracle. <laughs> that's legendary. That, that's good to know. That's good to know. It's good to show that uh, planification is everything. Yep. So, Sandy, for this year's con, how many people um, attended? Uh, we don't actually have a hard number. Um, for a couple of reasons, basically, um, we have, we, we know we crossed a thousand, obviously, Mm -hmm. and we crossed about 1100 because we know what supplies we ran through. Okay. Um, because like we ordered, uh, like 700 books. We ran out of those like the Saturday morning, very early. We ordered 900 lanyards and we were out of those by Saturday at noon. We ordered a thousand uh, badge blanks because we're like, all right, well, this because that was what we could afford at the time, because we have this thing called a budget. Um, we ordered a thousand <laughs> of uh, a thousand of those, and we ran through those, and then we had to basically get into the uh, organizational backup supplies, <laughs> and we burned through a chunk of those. So, 
um, w- the reason we say 1100 is like, well, uh, you know, because we know exactly how many people paid with credit card and through PayPal, mm-hmm. but we don't have a solid number of people that were just like, they show up, paid cash, and we didn't, uh-huh. because we were very shorthanded, uh, because first year cons, it's kind of how it is. Uh, we were shorthanded, and uh, so we just weren't keeping a solid record of their cash attendees. Mm, okay. If I'm not mistaken, um, Apple Cider also helped, right, in the front Yeah. Group? Um, he uh, helped out with the uh, VIP lead handling. So he worked with Glittering Pony from Equestria LA, mm. who was our uh, head of VIP relations, uh, as a quote-unquote handler for mm. the guests. Okay. Basically making sure that they don't have anybody mess with them while they're going point to point and making sure that, you know, they could get their coffee or whatever. Um, and it, it all worked out very well. Uh, we had, you know, one thing that we did is we made sure we had the best people we could for the job. So um, mm. ha- having AC involved was definitely a, a boon. From one of your episodes, um, I don't remember. It, I think it was one of the episodes after the convention that you guys talk about um, how the whole convention went from your point of view. And listening to you talk about that, it was really awe-inspiring and makes me want to, well, kind of join in any convention and help out and make it successful because hearing your story is really awesome. Just helping out. Wow. (laughs) Just helping out sounds fun. (laughs) I spent most of my convention behind the registration table. And, you know, it was certainly not what I had hoped to spend, you know, how I would have liked to spend my time. I would have liked to have been on the floor a lot more. But, you know, being a chairman, being the guy in charge means that if a ball is dropped, it's up to you to pick it up. It's mm-hmm. up for you to say, all right, well, if this needs to get done and I don't have other people, so I'm going to make sure it gets done, mm-hmm. you know, and – that's I, I don't know if that's it, it's my mentality. I'm not gonna definitely I'm not gonna apply that to anybody else. But you know that's just how I see it. And and so you know I was behind the scenes most of the con. I uh, I did the the reg thing, but also in the evenings I helped out with other stuff and made sure that everything was running smoothly. Okay, that's cool. I remember the, uh, when I, I because I I watched all of the. All of the videos that Ponyville Life uh, posted on their YouTube channel, and I remember that in one of them, I think it's uh, there is Apple Cider is making a, an interview with I don't I don't remember who it was, but I remember at one point of the video you show up to make sure that everyone is doing okay and that they have what they need, and you stay there for like one minute and then you rush to the next uh, to the uh, to the next uh, room. To, again, to make sure that everybody has what they need. Did you spend the entire weekend uh, doing that, going from room to room, making sure that everybody was doing okay? Because that had to be, like, hard work. Well, it certainly was. I mean, uh, and and when I was not in registration, I did do that. I was making sure the panels were going off as they should, making sure that everybody had what they needed. You know, because what you're talking about, you're talking about the uh, the podcasting panel, because I was with uh, Dusty Cat and Def Mech and Apple Cider. And uh, there was a bit of confusion um, as to who was running that podcast episode or podcast uh, panel. Mm-hmm. And it, you know, we had to basically go, oh, wait, we need, you know, this person, this person. And then Dusty Cat showed up uh, after the fact and, and joined in. And we were like, yo, hey, if you want to do this, you know. Um, so basically, I ran in, said hi, made sure everything's cool. And, uh, then walked on to the next thing. There was another panel next door to it, you know, making sure that everything's cool in the artist alley. Main events, you know, was very well handled by our AV guy, Zyro. Mm-hmm. Um, making sure that, you know, well, like my parents uh, were in the dealer's room, right? So I was, you know, mm-hmm. popping in there, making sure that they're okay, making sure that they're, you know, sales are good and, you know, making sure that she, uh, our, our vendor uh, head had everything she needed talking to you know our guests i have gone to conventions uh here in my in my city and uh i go to the vendors place and i see what they what they have for sale and many times i see things that are not 
exactly appropriate. Like, I, I will just give an example, but there was a convention that was supposed to be PG, and they were selling Dakimakuras. <laughs> if you don't know what that is, look at that on the internet. But it's not safe for war, guys. And I really frowned upon that, especially on a PG convention. So, um, uh, what was your uh, your criteria when uh, saying uh, allowing what people can sell, and how do you keep a control that they are selling what they are selling? Like you make sure that everything is under control. Well, um, making sure that you have a very concise policy is really important. Um, basically, we were a G-rated convention. That is primarily because, well, we it is an all ages event. Because My Little Pony is an all ages mm-hmm. property, that's also Hasbro's rule. Oh. You have to keep it very clean because they're keenly aware of people's quote unquote reputations, and you know they don't want any funny business at their conventions that their IP is represented at. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like bronies are weird, but they're doing. You know, it's like, all right, these guys are raising money for charity. They just, you know, make sure we keep it clean and whatnot. And obviously, you know, that was our goal from the start. And so when it came to the vendor's room, we we drew up basically policies saying, you know, it's like these are explicitly disallowed. You cannot sell this, 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 anything. Adults is outright banned. If we catch you selling it, you are in deep trouble. Mm. Um, And, you know, we made sure that this was communicated to every single person in the dealer's den. You know, even, you know, like, for example, we had Bray Burned. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. As a vendor. And people, I'm sure, are well aware of what he draws uh, normally. Yeah. And we basically said, look, you know, we, we know who you are. We know what your art style is. But we also know you can keep it clean. Please do so while you're here. Mm. Yeah, it's the, it's the same situation as with uh, Atril or, or John Joseco. They both, uh, they both can draw adult stuff, but they can also draw clean stuff. It's, oh, yeah. It's, you know. Yeah. And it's, it's basically approaching them like adults and saying, look, you know, your, your regular content is cool on the net, but, under here, but here please understand, you know, this is the rules, and please abide by them. If you don't, we'll take your table away. Uh, and okay. we didn't even well, have that- to make... We didn't even have to really make that quote unquote threat because these people, you know, they've been to conventions, they know the rules, they've sold before, and it was not a problem because we made sure that our expectations were extremely clear. Mm. Oh, okay. That's very cool. That's very cool that they uh, abide by the rules. But that's something that is not strange with the with the Brony community. I mean, it's it, I, rare, uh, rarely I hear problems at the vendors uh, vendors halls. There's there's even videos of the voice actors going through the vendor halls and seeing what they have for sale, and everybody seems so nice and so. Even when the when the celebrities are not around, it's like, oh my god, that's so cool! I want to be there. It's like, yeah. Don't but that's really cool that they, that people are, are abided by the rules. That's nice. Don't we all? Don't we all? And talking about um, show guests going to the conventions, um, Sandy, do you have a story about guests or people from the show going to the convention halls or going uh, to the... Yeah. Um, so this was, I believe, on Saturday night. Um, we had a number... Uh, the, the people from DHX were staying at the convention hotel and they were like, yo, we're not doing anything tonight. We just want to tool around the convention and not be harassed. So, all right, cool. So what I did is I printed them up all badges that just said nobody important. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they were regular attendee badges and I hand them over and they just walked around, you know, just regular attendees and, they had a great time because, you know, not everybody knows who, you know, Jason Thiessen and, and Jim Miller and Woody are visually. They know who they are in the show. But when it comes to face to face, they're like, you know, who's that guy? I don't know. <laughs> he's just he's just a guy looking like he's having a good time exploring the convention. OK. And that was how it went. You know, um, <laughs> that sounds so much fun. If you you're know, it's. It, it's funny how uh, people people will recognize or not recognize someone. That reminds me of an anecdote that uh, Jennifer Lawrence, uh, the protagonist of the Hunger Games, 
she wasn't recognized when stepping out of the bathroom by Hunger Games fans. <laughs> so even when even when you're a fan of something, you can get completely clouded about uh, who this is and who this is not. It's like, oh, I don't recognize these people. That yeah. was a very smart way. Now, did it really say nobody important? Yeah, it just said nobody important. <laughs> well, um, that's that's almost that's almost like saying the treasure is not buried here. Please don't dig. <laughs> Wow. And you know, and, and it was really cool because the the people the, the our guests basically were the type of people that would be willing just to wander around and enjoy the, the evening convention stuff. Hmm. You know, um I saw uh Mitch Larson, you know, was one of our guests and I saw him multiple times just kinda chatting with people in the artist alley and hmm. just chatting with people walking through the con, you know. It's like he didn't have his on he didn't have all these creepers following him or anything. But, you know, he would go and talk to people and just have a good time. Mm. And yeah, it's just cool. Make you know, sort of the things. Remember to treat these guests. They are, you know, like they're people because they, they really are just people. Mm. And Sandy, um, I've got a question here. I, I'm not sure if you can answer it or not, but um, I've heard that I'm not hundred percent sure of how true is this, but I've heard that some conventions, they send out, um, let's say for any Bruni convention, sometimes they send out their Hasbro spies to take a look around. Is this true or not? Um, Hasbro does have eyes on conventions. Mm. Um, basically, the, you know, it is primarily up to the agents now, but Hasbro is going to be well aware of any event that you're trying to do that has their voice actors or show staff at, and they will... They will send out their uh, their eyes and ears to keep an eye on you, and if you know, and if you fail to uh, uh, meet their expectations, they will tell you. Oh. And if you if they're fine with it, you'll never know they were there. Basically, uh, yeah, you know, Hasbro keeps an eye on things, and you know, and and obviously in this time around, we had. Uh, Ralph Strike, the agent for Andrea, Peter, and Brenda, mm-hmm. um, he attended in person because you know he fe- he had a good feeling about us and he was not disappointed. Uh. You know, so it's like you know ev- at, after every convention, he has an after action meeting with the with the convention chair mm-hmm. to explain you know what he liked, what he didn't like, and for us it was like you know what. It's like you know I had a great time. This was really fun. If you need if you need any of my people next year, let me know. Mm. So. Talking about next year, will there be another Sandy Con next year? We're working on it. <laughs> cool. um, we're uh, we're looking at our options, and uh, you know, odds are it'll be in the same place as it was this year, with uh, you know a different slate of guests, and uh, you know, doing it all for charity. You know, mm. well, that's awesome. That's awesome because well, you're you're running a great convention. Everybody like it, and well. If you just only ran it once, it will be a shame. So I think most of us, or well, most of the one that went, really wants to go there again. And for people who heard good things about it, they want to go there to experience the whole fun. Yep. So, James, got anything for Sandy? I have officially run out of questions, although I, I think that's, that's enough of questions for now. I'm pretty sure you're already tired of me, like, oh, God, another question, why? <laughs> But um, thank you so much for answering them. You you really clear out a lot of doubts that I had regarding uh, uh, conventions and organizations because when you come to when you come to them, they are usually very airtight. Like uh, they almost act like if they if we tell them our secrets, they are going to steal them from us. Um, oh, but no, no. You, you were very kind to us for telling for sharing this uh, with us and very inspiring as well. Uh, although. The, Definitely, the, the the last word of advice will be to be responsible and uh, plan plan ahead, right? Definitely. Also, yeah. like, like when when talking about the quote unquote trade secrets nonsense, that's just not how conventions should work. More often than not, if you're trying to run a convention, talk to other people in your area. Mm-hmm. You know, they more often than not will be very willing to help. If nothing more than to give you some advice, you know, fandom conventions are not rocket science and fandom conventions are fandom conventions across the board. It's only the only difference 
is the core conceit. You know, if you're there for anime or there for comics or there for ponies, the core deal of a convention does not change. So, you know, do not be afraid to talk to other successful conventioneers in your area. They're, trade secrets are nonsense. Oh. Don't even pretend that that's legit. You know, conventions need to work together if they want if they want to be successful. That's just how it is. Got it. Okay. So, if you want to do a convention, ask for help. Is <laughs> there's no shame in doing it? In asking for help. Oh, okay. So, uh, Mythos has a question. Um, how oh. much work goes into a good convention? How many hours of pre-planning and stuff? Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> um, well, Bob and I started planning this 15 months ago. Oh, my. It's so, okay. we started planning more than a year before our convention. Because you need lots of lead time to make sure that your uh, contracts and all that are squared away and you can get all your guests and make sure your funding is, uh, is secure. Um, and as for how much time Bob and I put into it, I would say easily several many hundred hours oh. of personal time. I, I think that if I went to um, my phone records and looked at the number of minutes that I used talking to Bob, uh, I would probably be shocked. Hmm. If I'm not mistaken, when you started the whole idea, um, Hasbro did a lockdown on their guests? Uh, they had been. It was pre... <laughs> it was unfortunate. It was uh, It was in... Because we, we were gotten to the point where we'd gotten the groundwork laid, mm -hmm. but we were working, trying to get guests, the voice actors... And Hasro was very no after uh, Equestria LA 20, 2012. I thought and that was Las Pegasus that's when they said no. No, actually, that was before that. So oh. it was after it was after EQLA. It wasn't because EQLA. It was EQLA went fine, but Hasro was kind of like these bronies are weird. Let's oh. just say no. Um, and basically, this made nobody happy on that side of things hmm. because the, the the for the agents and the guests, that's money in their pocket. And for like the show people, that's recognition that they don't otherwise get. Um, so basically after it was like the tail end of January that they finally were like, all right, fine. <laughs> all right. Now agents, this is on you. Um, and then Las Pegasus happened immediately after. So Hasbro just was laughing. Like I told you, I told you those <laughs> Brodies. Ah, <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay. So that that one that that immediately happened after uh, they had relinquished their grip was not good. Mm. But after that, uh, the Brony community stepped it up, right? For the most part, yeah. Mm. I think pretty much everybody. Uh, I'm gonna say that I think at least everybody guest wise has gotten paid since. Mm, okay. I'm pretty sure. And That's a, good to know. You don't want to have uh, the people that bring you the show that we all know and love so much to be angry at you. Hmm. That's not a good idea. Nope. I think there's a question from Lai Kent. Okay, uh, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. But anyway, uh, are you uh, are you still amazed at how far people travel to attend your convention? Uh, I'm impressed, definitely. Um, I'm you know I know that people will travel very, very far to go to a convention that they perceive as being, you know, worth their while. Um, I know for a fact we had, we had people from Canada, obviously mm -hmm. we had people come from Mexico city. <laughs> um, but we also had a guy come from Italy. Ooh. Um, so, I mean, we had people all over the U S but we also had several international people show up. It's pretty cool. Mm. I wish I could have been there, but, uh, flight costs and visa. It's not easy. I was actually I was actually trying to get there, see if my finances could cover it, but nope. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sandy. I'll try I... harder next year. <laughs> I know how expensive it can be. It's that's okay. <laughs> I I I know. I know you share my pain when it comes to like getting getting something shipped over here or getting getting around. <sighs> so uh, well, I think we won't um, stretch to other questions beyond. 
um, the conventions because I could ask a few questions about podcasting, but I don't eat up much of your time. It's all good. But anyway, um, thanks, Chef, for answering our questions about conventions and making us know that not all convention people are evil. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I'm, I'm glad I could shatter that misconception. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's just only me, but hey. Um, anyway, um, Chef, where can they catch you on the net? All right, well, uh, you can always catch me on Twitter at, my, at Chef Sandy, uh, one word. Um, you can also uh, catch me every week at uh, uh, Justin TV slash Bernieville Podcast, uh, which is our weekly recording session. It's at noon Pacific, 2 p.m. Central, where we live record Bronyville. Um, if you show come up to our live show, we have uh, pre-show and post-show that are not recorded, so we get to talk about silly stuff that's not going to show up on the podcast. Yay. Super ah. exclusive for our listeners. I have been there, and it's really exclusive. Yes, yes. Um, and you know, that's that's pretty much it. And uh, you can always you know take a look at our uh, Nightmare Nights Twitter at uh, Nightmare Nights Dallas. No, just at Nightmare Nights. Because Nightmare Nights Dallas was too long. Nightmare Nights, <laughs> and we'll have information on anything for year two coming up before too long. Oh, do, do you um, do you have a website for Nightmare Night Dallas? Um, it's nightmarenights.net, but currently it's in, uh, like, next year. Uh, you know, the con is over. Will we return to bring forth Eternal Night once again? <laughs> it's uh-huh. just sort of a, a parking page. You're like, mm. yeah, we're... Uh, we have the rights. Like, this is our website. Hey, there it is. And, and uh, you have a Tumblr for Nightmare Night? Uh, yeah, it's uh, nightmarenights.tumblr.com, but we don't really use it. Mm, I, I think you need to hire some artists to make some thing for it, because... J- James, what was that convention in the Brit that did a, convention, uh, did a Tumblr thing? Oh, that will be Buck, which is uh. the uh, Brit- uh, is the the British UK convention. And they have a Tumblr uh, called As Britannia, and they in there they have a they have a storyline going, and that, they also use the Tumblr to promote their convention. It's uh, both artistic and it has. Uh, Actually, you know what? It will be a good idea to have a sketchy talk about this, but I think it's too late in the show to bring him in. Yeah, no problem. Because yeah. he's he's one of the mods. But yeah, I mean, it's both uh, visually good because interesting because it has all the artwork uh, done by very talented artists, and it has uh, announcements of when the convention is going to be, where, what's going to happen, etc. Yeah, that that is a really neat idea. Well, just dropping out there. If you want to use it, I'm not claiming anything. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks, Cindy, for coming on. And, well, I'll just add in all the links to the show notes. And let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is letter time. Yes, we have letters. Yay. Very rare. We have letters. Anyway, salutations, Malaysian podcasters, Pony. And also, honored guests. First off, I just want to thank you all for making a great show. I was wondering, what will you guys like to see in Season 4 of My Little Pony? For me, I hope to see some bad ponies on the show and other Luna centric episodes and some Celestia episodes would be cool as well. Your faithful listener, Darkest Knight. Well, um I'm just gonna hand it out to James first. James? I want to see ponies. <laughs> I have learned that the lower my expectations are for something, the lower my the less painful my disappointment is going to be, if none um, however, I do it because I like to keep my mind open to whatever they are going to come up next. Uh, my Little Pony has proven to be a very creative, very imagination-ridden show. So the best way to go into it is uh, to have no preconceptions whatsoever. Because then head cannons get involved. And then uh, 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 wishful thinking gets involved. And then people uh, get mad because, oh my god. It, it turns out Stars will the beer that was in the recent real or that Indu happens to be a real person. No, oh, no, those jerks. What have they done? So yeah, I just want to see ponies. That's <laughs> that's what I want to see in season four. I think yeah. I'm not going to be disappointed in that regard. <laughs> well, suddenly humans. <laughs> what about you, Sandy? Um, you know, I, I cute horses doing cute things. You know, definitely like James said. Um, and 
you know, seeing if they have any uh, celebrity guest cameo voice actors or, uh, you know, what kind of what kind of shenanigans they get up to, you know, because they haven't revealed everything yet. You know, there's only like the first nine episodes or whatever. There's 26 total. Mm. So, I mean, they've less than a third of the episodes are known at this point. Mm, true, true. So, you know, lots of exciting stuff coming up, I'm sure. Well, for me personally, uh, I'm a bit creative. So, for me personally, I, I want a song, maybe a poppy song. And also, maybe, well, like Darkest Night says, some bad ponies. That would be cool. That would be cool. But personally, I want a pop song that is infectious, that can go into your head. Like, last season's song was Bab Seeds, and that was catchy. And I, I want something like that again. Yeah. And hey, there's uh, there's there could be a song today. Ooh. Who knows? Do not do not believe her lies. <laughs> Wait, no, that's from Memento, wrong, wrong movie. Um, yeah, but we're recording this before the episode. But when this comes out, episode's already out, and uh, yeah, yeah, everything's all topsy turvy. But a song, that's what I want. A song. Maybe today I'll get my wish come true. I wouldn't say dubstep because I don't know if Daniel Ingram can do the dubsteps. Yeah, and and dubstep really doesn't uh, lend itself to lyrics. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Besides, dubstep is not really all that catchy. When you think about it, every dubstep song is exactly the same. Well, like every Inception horn is the same. But anyway, True. let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is shoutouts. And my first shoutout goes to you, Chef Sandy. Thank you for being on and thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. Oh, thank you. And to you, James, for, well, hosting me on this live stream because everybody knows I need it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, ah, no, man, it's okay. You're popular enough. You can get as much people as I, as I did. Come on. Don't cut yeah. yourself, don't, don't cut yourself loss, uh, short. You are, you, you, you're a good popular guy. Oh, I, I, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> you have more followers than me on Twitter. That you are already are more popular than me in that regard. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. This, this is not measuring our. No, no. Uh, but anyway, what about you, um, James? Anybody you want to thank? Well, uh, I'm going to steal one of your shout-outs, and I want to give a shout-out to Chef for coming on over as well um, and sharing his knowledge of the the convention scene with us and uh, basically give a, lo- a lot of good advice and uh, clarify a lot of doubts that I had regarding this, uh, which is such a popular thing that personally we know so little about mm, that's true. Um, because we have conventions everywhere, but nobody knows how they work. It's like bicycles. Um <laughs> Uh, and I want to give a shout out to all the people that are watching us on the stream right now. The wonderful, wonderful, beautiful people that uh, are helping out me and my family. And, and of course, all my followers on, on, on Ask Movies Slate and on my mod blog. Yes, thank you so much for that. Yay. And what about you, Sandy? I'd like to give a uh, shout out to my co chair, Mr. Bob Carr. He and I, I couldn't have done it without him, that's for dang sure always be grateful for the people that help you out because it's of all volunteers. Mm, that's true, that's true. I uh, couldn't have done with him. And I also want to shout out to my co-host, uh, AC, because, well, without him, I couldn't do Bronyville, so. That is true. Yeah. And Sandy, we need to get Cider on this show because we have you I on agree. three times. And we need him on to complete the trifecta. We have the straight man. We need to get the loose cannon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Boy. But, but anyway, um, thank you for being on. And well, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at nbshow at gmail.com. If you would like to reach us personally, you can reach me at norma at nbshow.com, Daniel at nbshow.com. And also on Twitter, you can reach the show's Twitter account at the MBS show. Sweetie Bob will tweet back to you and say stuff. And as for me, I'm at Norman Sanzo. I will tweet pictures of toys, food, and whatever tickle my fancy. James, what about you? I am on Twitter at James Cork, uh, and you can find me on DeviantArt at jamescork.deviantart.com. You can visit my Tumblr at askmovieslate.tumblr.com. All righty then. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, and also Stitcher Radio, and like us on Facebook. Yes, we have the Facebooks. Link will be provided in the show notes. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I have been James Cork. And I've been Jeff Sandy. And I'll see you next, well, maybe next week, because I'm going to a convention next week. Yay! Bye, guys. Adios. Bye-bye. <laughs>